why don't you take five seconds and just put your hands together and praise the Lord for allowing you to be here this morning, uh, allowing you to open up your eyes, allowing you to see your loved ones one more time, allowing you to take a deep breath and be able to do it without difficulties. The Lord is good. Yes, he is. Heavenly Father and all wise God, once again, will we bask in your mercy and your grace. We don't deserve all the blessings you have poured up on us, but we do bask in your mercy and grace. And we ask you, O oh Lord, today to touch our pastor as he comes and brings forth the word. Let the word settle deep in the heart of each and every person that hears it. And if there's one among us that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we ask you, O oh Lord, to bless them even right now, that they will feel the conviction in their heart and the spirit moving in their heart, that they will come asking, what must I do to be saved? Bless those that are sick. Bless those that are on their way here. Bless those that can't make it. Lord God, just continue pouring your blessings out on us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. We come to give God all the praise. We come to give God all the honor. Why? Because he deserves it. It's due his name. Come on, everybody. Everybody say bless, 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 bless. If you love him, say bless, 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 bless. Bless, bless. We're blessed, we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeat. We are. We're blessed. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeat. We are. Listen. Everybody say bless. 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 If you love him, say bless. 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 Bless, 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 bless. We're blessed. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must, for the devil is. We are. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are. Let me hear you say blessed. 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 If you love them, say blessed. Blessed. Bless, 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 bless. One more time. We're blessed, we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come. And when we go, we cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is. We are. Listen. 
Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Everybody say, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. And it's going to work in your favor. I'm a witness that late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn that thing around. And it's going to work in your favor. Oh, God's going to turn around. It's going to work in your favor. You have to believe that thing with your mind and your spirit. Late in the midnight hour. It's going to work. It's going to work in your favor. Telling you lay. God's going to turn around. And 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 around. Tell you late. Late in the midnight hour. It's going to work. You got to believe it. Tell you lay. God's going to turn around. And 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 around, and around, and around, and around, telling you late. as we have a few announcements so you that um, so that you would know just everything that's going on within the life and health of our church um, uh, for one of them um, please just as a reminder if you have not updated your church membership records please email our church administrator um, sister Dana Ross um, at Mount Herman uh, Mount Herman D Ross at gmail.com please send her your email to update your membership records and also all dates and activities uh, must be scheduled by our church administrator as well. And then also please keep in mind that this Wednesday we will start Bible study hosted by Bishop Washington and Johnny Jordan. So it is always good that we can get back to fellowshipping around God's word. Um, and lastly, um, as again, please help us to keep our new sanctuary nice and clean. Um, please no beverages, food, crayons, or markers um, in the seats. Um, and we will be able to use the other areas of the church for this. Um, we ask um, during this time that you um, please continue patience with us um, during our remodeling phase as we bring it to completion. Um, so with that being said, thank you guys for the announcements. And now we will turn this over um, to, again to our praise and worship team.
stand to your feet and give God praise for our bishop, our pastor, Bishop Donald J. Watson. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord. Let's give God some praise. And Amen. You may be seated. If you have not noticed, we have some dignitaries with us today, and we certainly don't want to uh, move any further until we just talk about who they are. Of course, obviously, Brother Larry, uh, Elder Larry Price, stand up, Pastor Reverend, remain standing. And next to him is Nick Bankston, which we call Elder Barge, who's uh, running for city council. You know, he's a minister from here at Mount Hermon. Also, we have the president of the city council, the city council, Shannon Harden. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, matter of fact, uh, Consuelo, I mean, come on, stand up, sis. Yeah, that's her. She's here. <laughs> And we have a special guest. All of them are special, but we had the opportunity of uh, doing the, uh, Dr. King and I was on the screening committee, and all of these that you see here today, we screened to see what their life was prior to becoming, uh, or running for their particular entity, a particular office. But this one is the mayor of Dayton, Nan Wally. She's here. She is the president of the mayor's for the national, and we are so proud of her. And I hope and pray to God that she beats DeWine. She's running for governor. I don't think we ever had a woman governor. Look at her. I watched her on television. She is good. And uh, Dr. King and I, we were just so excited about them coming uh, and, and sharing with us. Uh, she was very profound in her discipline, and all of them did a phenomenal job. So, Mr. Shannon, if you will come now. We have something special today. Yeah, come on, Kamisha. I mean, uh, come on, Nan. You can come, too. Come on, Miss Nan. Mr. Come on, you can come, too. Everybody know Elder Price. He's the man around town. I've known him a good 40 years. He caught me at a bad time when somebody wrecked my... Was still, uh, <laughs> I had a brand new Mercedes Benz. And, huh? Yeah, it was a Lincoln. What was it? A stinking Lincoln. So I had this brand new. It had 18 miles on it. And somebody came and bust the windows out of my car, tried to steal my radio, broke inside of my glove compartment, and he started speaking in tongues, known tongues. Come on, Shannon. Praise the Lord, saints. It is good to be back in person and just praise the Lord here at Mount Hermon. So, I am here, obviously, with uh, my friends, my colleagues, Lord Esperosa de Padilla and Nick Bankston, who are running for Columbus City Council, and Ms. Nan Whaley, who is running for governor. But we didn't just come because we have an election day coming up, and that we just want to encourage folks to get out to vote. We came because this is a special day in the life of Mount Hermon. Uh, we are here to celebrate Bishop Washington and his 40th anniversary preaching here. <laughs> So we, when we thought of a fitting way to recognize Bishop, we went through the list of things that we can do that are under our purview in terms of city council and city leadership. I talked to Nick Bankston, and we went back and forth, and we said, well, we've already uh, proclaimed a day for him. He's already had a uh, proclamation from the mayor. You already had a resolution from the city council. And so, yeah, I did bring another recognition from Columbus City Council, and this just is the, the thing that we do, Bishop. You bring a resolution, but that's nice, right? All right, thank you, Bishop. But, but, but that was not enough. 
for all that Bishop has done in our community, for the father figure that he is, to not just DJ and Trina and to mother, uh, to mom Washington, uh, but Bishop Washington plays such an important role in our community, advocating for affordable housing, advocating for safety and police reform. Uh, you guys see it here every Sunday, but we feel it every day in this community, his impact. And so we've only done this one other time uh, where uh, city council has uh, opened up our doors uh, to a person. Several years ago, I was on a delegation and we gave this same symbol to uh, our sister city, the mayor of Dresden. And it is, uh, Bishop, will you join me? So I, as, I don't have the authority to give away the keys to the city, but what I can do is open up the doors of council chambers. And so here I have a special recognition for Bishop Washington. It's the doors of, of city council chambers are always open for Bishop. It says the spirit of its people is the soul of a city, honoring Bishop Donald J. Washington on his 40th pastoral anniversary at Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church. This is a, a distinct honor, and we just thank you for your service and for your leadership of our great city. Thank you so very much. It would be remiss if I didn't invite uh, Nan Whaley, the mayor of Dayton, up here. She is a friend and a visitor to our city, and I believe she's going to be the next governor of the state of Ohio. Please recognize Ms. Nan Whaley. Well, good morning, Saints. I bring you greetings from Dayton, Ohio. Just a short visit up across 70. It's a real pleasure to be here. and. So grateful for Elder Price and all the great work he does in keeping us connected to the community of Columbus and certainly the great council president, Shannon Harden, who's a great friend uh, to me and to many folks that are really working hard to make our communities and our state stronger. I want to be brief. I just want to say I'm so excited to be invited to come here and celebrate this 40th, uh, 40 years of uh, steadfastness and working to make our communities stronger. Uh, the church plays such a key role in that for our communities, particularly in Columbus and Dayton and cities across the state. But I want to just say, as we elect these great candidates next no this November, I'm not, I'm not even running until next year, but I wanted to visit you all and say that we can do better in this state. We can have a state. We deserve better. We deserve a state and leaders that are looking out for regular folks that are doing the living and dying in our communities every day instead of the self-interest and self uh, self-fulfillment that is going at the state on at the state house right now a place where the fbi calls the most corrupt in the country we can do better and we need regular folks that are leading us that understand the trials and tribulations of our communities and as mayor of dayton i understand that so I hope you'll think of me next year. Look forward to seeing you all much more over the coming year. And please don't forget to vote for these great candidates for Columbus City Council. Congratulations, Bishop, and thank you so much for having me here today. another rousing round of applause. Watch your step, please. Watch your step. All right, God loves a cheerful giver. Well, it's far better to give than to receive. You can't be God-giving. No matter how you try, the more you give, the more he gives to you. This is an unusual way that we do things here at Mount Hermon, but we normally don't let them talk, but I thought it would be good for them to at least express their concerns about the things that are happening in our culture. And I think it was so nice for her to come all the way from Dayton. And I have to say this, Reverend King is the chairman of our screening committee, and we had a lot of work to do. And some folk, we just kind of like, really? 
you, you running for office and, and you come here dressed like that, really? Where do you think you were going? And he's so mean, I'm just there. <laughs> How old are you? What church do you go to? Do you give your tithe and offering? I said, dang. He was just getting everything. I just said, yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Good to see my brother, my younger brother, Keith. We look so much alike. Keith Key and I, people see me on the street. Hey, Keith. I said, hey, I'm doing well. Good to see him. And Keith Brandon. See how the tall, stand up, Keith Brandon. This fella got so tall. Come on, stand all the way up. Now have your daddy stand up next to you. <laughs> Everybody loves Keith. We are ready to receive our offering. Uh, we have a way of doing that right now since we're not doing much walking. And so they will come uh, to your pew or your seat. We're praying for you, Julian. How's your brother doing? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Uh, can I just say this again? Please do not play with your life with all the conspiracy theories about the vaccination. Get your shots. I don't want to do another funeral with people that died of COVID because they refused to take the shot. Please, ma'am, and please, sir, don't play Russian roulette with your life. And it's really hitting up uh, our community with a vengeance. And uh, he said he's going to say something to his brother when he comes out. And uh, <laughs> we're just praying for him. Uh, real, my friends decided to just stop what we were doing and pray for him. We're certainly happy to see Lawrence Irvin. Many of you know, stand up Lawrence. His house caught on fire, but he's still here. He's still here. Bless the Lord. Phenomenal job. You can't be God given, if you will. Here we go. No matter. Father, Son, and 
And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets was breaking. So they signaled to the other partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Do not be afraid, for well, from now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. God bless you. I want to talk for a few moments, a fishing trip with Jesus on the boat. fishing trip with Jesus on the boat. I must say today there are a few elements in this text today that I want to consider in this vessel that they were in. Jesus, his fame had grown and spread abroad as he had healed a lot of sick folk. He had perform miracles upon miracles and their, in their sight and they were amazed at the kind of things that Jesus was doing and they finally figured out about all these miracles that Jesus had performed Deacon Green that he truly was the Messiah the son of the living God and so thousands of the people have gathered on the shores to hear a word from the Lord. They was right there on the lake of Genesaret. The lake of Galilee, literally, that's what it really is. And, and it was a natural place to go because when I was in Israel, I found out on that lake, it was a natural amphitheater where the land slopes upward and downward and the lake is at the bottom. And it serves as a natural auditorium that amplifies as the acoustics were magnified in the speaking that the waves would literally carry the voices up and down on the summits. And people were gathered there just to hear a word. When I was there in 2009, I remember Dr. Box was speaking to us on that lake and you could literally hear his voice without a microphone where 5,000 of us were standing there without a mic. It was such a miracle for me to watch 5,000, but one fella, Dr. Bach, is speaking to us on the Sea of Galilee. My brothers and sisters, I found out that everywhere you go, you ought to hear the word of God because this, they didn't have a microphone system. Sometimes preachers feel as though they can't preach if they don't have a mic. I remember many a day here, something happened uh, that the lights went out, and I didn't miss a beat. I just kept going. It seemed like God was able to magnify my voice and amplify my voice. The lights went out, and I could still see what I was reading. God has a way, and I have cataracts, but God can work miracles, even through a cataract. There is strength in the word of God, my brothers and sisters. This deliverance that we find that we have today is because of the word of God. People are delivered by what God says through his word. The word of God is a word of hope for all of us. And in the word of God, if you don't believe that that word of God has power, you need to ask your soul, how did you get here today without the word of God in you? How did you wake up this morning without knowing that the Lord will give you another day? 
when the soul is weary, try opening up the scriptures and listen to the psalmist say that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. So when I get to church, I want to be around some hallelujah folk. I want to be around some amenners every now and then. I want somebody to hunch me every now and then and say, did you hear what God just said through the word of God? When I come to church, I want to feel like I'm in church and hearing the word of God. He will lift you up every time we come to church. I was young, but now I'm old. I'm old now. But you know what I've never seen? I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. Man, I've had some days when I had two pennies to rub together, but God worked it out because we got throwback ministry. When we don't have a whole lot, we know how to get some spam. We know how to get some bologna. Y'all don't know anything about that. Fried bologna. Yeah, fried with that crust around the side of it. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Put it down so it get real crunchy. and Put some cheese on top of that. We got throwback. Y'all remember that, that uh, <laughs> pot of meat in that brown can? Y'all remember that, that, that powdered sugar and that powdered milk and that powdered everything? Praise the Lord. We remember those days. The, I have to remind you of the big can of peanut butter had that much grease on the top. You had to dig way down. Y'all don't know nothing about that. These kids don't know nothing. I keep reminding these young kids, they don't know anything about commodities. We get on the back of my daddy's truck and, and go to the fairground and get flour, we got meal, cornmeal. We got powdered eggs. How do you eat powdered eggs? You don't know anything about that king, do you? You're a king, son. You don't know anything. You always live high on the hog. Hmm. Listen, Peter and his partners used this vessel as a labor. And Jesus is using it as a place of intimacy. Listen, please allow me to kind of use kind of an allegory with respect to this sermon. This sermon I see today is in this vessel. For the labor is now a place of intimacy. He changes a boat that was used to being a vessel for fishing. And Jesus is using it as a pulpit. And there is intimacy on this boat. Not only is Jesus on board, but Peter and his crew is on board too. The closeness of the fellowship, the intimacy comes on the vessel now because what used to be used for fishing is now used for catching men. Preach black boy. And now it's a place of intimacy. Well, what are you trying to say? That's what the church is. That's what the church is supposed to be. It ought to be a place of intimacy. It ought to be a place of fellowship, koinonia, when we come together, where we gather together to see a few fellas and a few fillies in the church coming together every now and then on Sunday. We come here and thank God for another week. Thank God for keeping us. Thank God for feeding us. Thank God for keeping us holy. Thank God for keeping a roof over our head. Thank you, God. That's why we come here, because we want to have fellowship. Frankly, I don't know how people can make it to church and go to church and don't feel something every now and then. I, I, I couldn't face Monday if it were not for Sunday. After all, I have been going through crazy stuff all week long. Sunday is my time to give praise to God and just lift my hands and don't care who's knowing it and don't care who's watching me and don't care how people are looking at you. What are you what's that all about? You don't know what I've been through. You see my glory, but you don't know my story. You don't know that I, I was a stutterer. You don't know that I had problems reading. You don't know all of that. I was dyslexic, but here I am. Not stuttering as much. Church 
is a place where there's intimacy. Listen, you're not just here performing fashion. Look at Dick and Green. <laughs> Every Sunday, he knocks it out of the park. Stand up, Green. Give God a praise. Turn around. He said, if I'm going to come to church, I'm going to look churchy. That's the way it used to be when we were coming up. The mothers would come here with their hats printing down the aisle, wearing their little perfume, coming to church with their purse, coming with their rouge and lipstick and their wigs. I'm just saying. We came to church for fellowship. We wanted to be around kindred folk. And no, there was no big eyes or no little U's. You're not just here to show off and trying to be all that in a bag of chips. You're not here because you need, we're here because we need our cup filled. That's why I'm here. You lift up and re-energize yourself every Sunday. I do. I can't wait to get to church and see some smiling folk. I can't wait to get to church because if you live in our neighborhoods, sometimes you don't, do you speak? I speak to some of my neighbors and they look at me like I came from Mars. I'm waving. When I was coming up, you were sitting on the porch, you spoke to everybody. Hey, Miss Liddy Mae, how's your mama? That's the way we did in those days. The church is like uh, a corner in a boxing rack. Have you ever seen uh, when people are boxing and they go back, they, I mean, they jabbing and hitting and all, they go in that corner, you have a cut man. He patches you up. After you've gone through scars all week long, that's when we come to church. We have a one who is encourager. Y'all remember that fellow that used to be with Muhammad Ali? You can do it, champ. He just got knocked in his teeth, but he encouraged him to get back in the ring. That's what I'm trying to do to y'all today. Some of us want to throw in the towel. Listen, don't let me have to fight from the locker room. At least let me get inside the ring. Mm. Goes back to that corner to rest and cool off and then get back and get encouraged and that cut man patches him up. That's what we do on Sunday morning. When I come to church, I don't want to come here to fight. I don't want to come to church to have to fight folk. This is the house of God. I don't come here to talk about people. I don't come here to see what everybody's wearing. I don't want to know what you did last night. Is this on? I don't care about that. I don't even like Phaedra. I don't come to church to hear the good news. I mean, the the gospel, the gossip rather I come here to hear the good news the word of God folk don't come to church uh, to just fight folk don't come to church to come to the choir practice to hear you fussing at them they don't come to the usher board meeting talking about your legs hurt No, we come to church because this is a place, koanea, where we come to fellowship. We don't, we don't come to church to get, we, uh, to get knocked down. We come here to be encouraged. It's a place of intimacy. And that's what we need to be more engaged in. Don't just, I know as we during the pandemic, we can't, you know, shake each other's hands and all that. You can air high five them. Just let them know that you love them. Just let them know that you appreciate them. Because somewhere along the line, we, we've lost that love for one another, that, that closeness. And I used to hear the deacons pray, Lord, let us be so bind together that none of us fall without the other. Give us that love that flows from heart to heart and breast to breast. We don't even pray those prayers anymore. Well, it's a place of intimacy. It is a place of intimacy but it's also not a place of intimidation but it's a place of instructions they launched out their little nets and boats to the father in the boat 
and Jesus begins to teach them, verse 3, the word of God. The church ought to be a place of instruction. Sunday school is a place of instruction. There need to be more teaching in the church. If you're not prepared to teach, sit down. Don't get up to saying what well, the Lord told me and it ain't told me. Because some folk just think just because they got two scriptures that they've committed to memory that they are now an eschatological Bible expositor. Sit down. Hush. Want to lay hands on folk and you ain't laying hands on your own kids? Are you serious? You want to pray for me? You ain't prayed for yourself before you got here? No. Lay hands hastily on no man. If you are not prepared, we don't want to know about your personal life last night in your class. Your Sunday morning is about instruction. We are not going to be all that God wants us to be unless you study the word of God, study to show thyself approved unto God so that you can rightly divide the word of truth. Not being ashamed of it. Sunday morning is not just about the 10 o'clock. You need to study so that you can rightly divide the word of truth. That is why some of us can't shout because we don't know what we're shouting about. It's not a place, it's, it, it's a place of intimacy, it's a place of instruction, but it's also a place, watch this, of irritation. Yes, it's a place of irritation. They were toiling all night and caught nothing. I, I have to preach all day sometimes and catch a lot of fish over these 40 years. And when I catch those fish, fish, I found out that there's other folk trying to fillet my fish. <laughs> Y'all go get that when you get home. I got a lot of folk over these 40 years, man. And, and there's other folk that have come into God's house because of the preached word. And then you have some uppity person trying to teach your flock. And they have not been taught themselves. They say stuff like, well, don't believe what he says because he ain't all of that. He's been teaching that class for two weeks, and last night he was drunk. Well, you were too if you saw him. <laughs> Where were you when he was gone? Why you know? I got it from a reliable source. In the word reliable is the word lie. Go on and preach, Reverend. You want some fish to clean? You go catch some. That's what we do on Sunday morning and in teaching our classes, that we are there to catch fish. It's disrespectful for me to catch fish and then you try to clean them. Y'all get that when you get home. The church is a place of intimacy, it's a place of instruction, but it's also a place of irritation. Place of irritation. In Columbus, I would have to say, it's a wonderful place to live, but in Columbus, we have some people that are just out there trying to clean other folks' fish. We don't go from house to house and evangelize. We go to church to church to find your itch. It'd be a wonderful place to go to church if it wasn't for some folk. I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not trying to throw it off. I'm not trying to throw any shade. But I don't have any enemies to punish. I'm just preaching the word of God. You do your best for some folk, and, and they just don't appreciate it. You, you go out of your way to speak to some folk, and they act like you don't even exist. You try to be kind and nice, and they look at you as if you're from Mars. You try to get on the missionary board, and they look at you, you just got here. You try to make sure that they want to come to the choir, and then because of the clickishness, they don't want them to come. 
because they think they cannot sing and you better not sing two notes better than them this is our choir we don't want you there this is our usher board we've been here for 40 years you knew on the block what are you going to teach us now that's what's happening on that vessel well what else you see I, I want you to consider now the voyage they're on the boat I'm going to get deep in a minute. The vessel is a place of intimacy. It's a place of uh, ir uh, instruction. And it's also a place of irritation, or if you will. But consider now verse 4 and 5, the voyage. Watch this voyage. Jesus gives two foils, if you will. He looks at two different issues. Jesus gives us these two facts. Listen, first of all, he says, launch out into the deep, and when you get there, let down your nets. Two folds. He said, I want you to do two things. I want you to launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Uh, I think y'all didn't get that yet. I want you to launch out into the deep and drop your nets. Is that in your Bible? Now that makes sense to launch out into the deep and, and that's the first command and when you get out there, let down your nets. Read it again, DJ. Nothing is wrong with the boat, but the boat is not out there where the fish are. The church would be a great place if we understood how much power we have when we launch out in the deep and drop our nets. The church just ain't going anywhere where the fish are. We come to church every Sunday. We hear the word of God, evangelism, but we are in the aquarium. The fish are not here on Sunday morning. They've already been caught. The fish are on Main Street. The fish on Mount Vernon and 20th. The fish are out on, on Cleveland Avenue and Myrtle. Oh, y'all trying to act brand new. Y'all know where those places are. That's where the fish are on 17th. Come on. Windsor Terrace, which is now Rosewind, Bolivars like we used to, that's where the fish are. We will never go where the fish are. We don't want the fish up in here with us because this is our aquarium. Y'all get that when you go home. Y'all shout later. We, we want to keep them out of the aquarium because they, because in the aquarium, in the aquarium, there are some pretty fish. In here, there's some angel fish and some gold fish. Those are pretty fish. But we don't want those bottom feeders out there in that lake. Yeah, come on. He didn't come here to save us to take care of the aquarium, but to fish in the lake. The fish in the lake got to be dragged from the bottom. Go get some people who are not wearing Chanel number five. Go, go out there and get some folks that's not wearing polo blue. Go out there where, where those guys are wearing they, they pants below their drawers. Go out there and get some pole dancers. Go, go out there and get those that are sniffing like I thought when I was in Vietnam. I wrote my sister, I said, I said, Edna, I've seen something just as crazy. I said, I saw a guy take his fingernail and was sniffing confectionate sugar. She said, fool, that's cocaine. I'm from Ohio. I didn't know anything about it. I'm from the 60s because we need to get those kind of folk 
but we don't want them up in here in our aquarium because they're just nasty. Well, listen, all of sin comes short of the glory of God. We keep in the aquarium when God wants us to drag the lake. There is no shortage of sinners out there. They are all around us every day. We just are living by the 11th commandment. Thy shall not be caught. There's no shortage, Nancy. Just don't want them up in here. In our choirs, in our choirs, in our missionary society because we want some clean fish. That's not unity, that's uniformity. Stop trying to get somebody that looks like you. We don't want people to be a clone of me. We try to be an imitation of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We need some ex-drug addicts up in here. Some ex-pimps. Yeah, y'all don't see. That's why y'all got real quiet right there. We don't want them up in here because this is Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church. Missionary? No, it's stationary. Because we haven't gone out into the hedges and the byways. We're too cute for that. We're too clean for that. We don't want to be sullied by them. I never will forget the men of courage and how we went out on two nights, which is an extension of trusted partners. There I am on Maine and Kelton. Yeah, y'all know where that is. There I am, I'm preaching, you know, they give me the mic every now and then. Mike, you know, Jones would give me the, the, the mic and I saw some folk I knew that belonged to a lot of churches. Oh, wow, really? I was shocked at two or three o'clock in the morning who's out there on the streets. And seven folk gave their lives to Christ on a Friday night. Oh, yeah. And watch this, before I can get back to church, on Sunday morning, Lord Jesus, I saw a reverend out there selling crack. I saw him out there being a pimp out on Main Street and Kelton. I saw those women coming. He must be a pimp. I said, I am. Can you spell pimp? Yeah, P-I-M-P, -P, yeah. Preaching is my profession. Now what? Because we don't want to do that. There's no shortage of sinners in our church, our choirs, and all that kind of stuff. Stop trying to be somebody, be a clone of yourself. We need some ex drug addicts, all that up in here. Because if you want God to use you, you'll be dancing on a pole. If you have been out there and you know where you come from, you will have a testimony that no one else has. I'm so sick and tired of hearing these testimonies. He ain't been anywhere. So this young seven-year-old boy said, you don't know where I, like I know what the Lord has done for you, for me. But you don't know what I've been through. I said, boy, you just mad because your mama took your Nintendo away. Shut up. All of that's going on. You feel, you got to feel your soul in this process. He fills my heart with love. That's what I love about the Lord. When I go out there, I know God is protecting me. Come on, come on here, y'all. We used to be some other folk. Ask Ron Mapp. He'll tell you. Mapp used to beat folk up. But now he's beating them, getting back in the church. Look at him. Big light skin bully but the Lord took all that out of him I've seen listen we was on our way to uh, I was on my way to Washington D.C. and it was in a hurry I have to tell it Ron Mapp get me in the car we gotta go you're gonna be in late so I get in the car, we rush him, we get to the airport, and some guy, Ron, Ron was in a hurry, he pulled in front of this guy, and this guy come out and say, hey, 
What do you think you're doing? Before I knew it, Ron had taken his jacket off. I said, hey, 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 hold. He said, I was going to slap the whiskers off. I said, man, you can't do that. And so when I'm going through the line, this man was all nervous. I said, yeah, he, he can fight. I'm a witness. He said, he was going to whoop me. I said, yes, he was going to whoop all of you. But he don't do that anymore as much. So that's what God wants. He wants ex-people that can do wonderful things for the body of Christ. Listen, you got to go where the fish are. Not only are, are we fishing in the aquarium, but we are fishing in somebody else's pond. A net will never fill up until you let it down. When's the last time you let it down? I don't care how pretty it is, how expensive it may be. It's worthless until you let your nets down. All kind of people. That's what happened on this boat. Intimacy, instructions, and irritation. But what about, that sounds good. You talk about the voyage. You talk about the vessel. But what is the victory here? But notice, the Lord said, this is what I want you to do. Launch out. I've been preaching. He said, well, Lord, we, we are fishermen. We know all about fishing. Why, why are you you're a carpenter. You know about doors and, and all that cabinets and all that kind of stuff. We are experts in this. We've been out here all night toiling and trying to catch fish. He said, no. He said, no, you go out there. Take your net, take your fish, take your boat, go out there, drop it. He said, nevertheless, at your word, I'm going to do it. He drops his net and so many fish came up out of that net that his friends had to come and help because the boat was beginning to sink. Sometimes God gives us more for being faithful than we give back to him. Come on. There's some things that God has done for us and we don't give back to him what he's done for us. That's when I come to church, I want to give him my all. I want to sing with power, thanking God. I want to preach with power. I want to witness with power. And whenever we come to church, we ought to be on a power surge. We want to let everybody know there is victory in Jesus. We ought to consider the vessel, the voyage, but there's a victory. You may not think you're reaching people, but you, there are two types of evangelism. There is lifestyle evangelism and then there's cultural evangelism. All we have to do is people to look at us. Can we say, look at me? I have a testimony. I have something to shout about. That's what we do when we come to church. We leave this place saying hallelujah. Praise God for blessing me. What God can do for others, he can do for you. There is no secret. I don't feel like it this morning. What God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. I wish I had a witness in here. Is there anybody here that know that it had not been for the Lord on your side? I'm not leaving here until I get my blessing today. I'm not leaving here until God lets you know that your worship is for real. Have I got a witness? In the house. I'm not trying to be mean and unsympathetic. But if you step out with the word of God, you, I don't feel like it, may not have a whole lot to say but they can see Jesus in your life. Is there anybody here not <laughs> that no, had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I gotta get out of here today. But every time I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. 
praise God for saving me. I haven't been the best person in the world, but I tried to do the best that I can because the Lord will make a way somehow. Is there anybody here know that the Lord will make a way out of no way? I'm looking at folk here in the church that the Lord has blessed above and beyond their expectations. I watch you come into God's house with a smile on your face. But when I look back over my life and begin to think things over, I can truly say I've got a testimony. Is there anybody here got a testimony that knows that God has been good to you? Just look at the person next to you. Say, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I just couldn't keep it to myself. Oh, yes. You may not be able to sing like an angel. You may not be able to preach like Paul. But you can tell somebody, I love the Lord. He heard my cry when I was down on my back. And I think I couldn't make it. The Lord stepped in at the right time. Is there anybody here thought the Lord had given up on you? But look at you now. You were sick in your body. You got up and gave God praise for blessing you. I got to give my testimony. When I think about 55 years ago, when I was down on my back in the Republic of Vietnam, I keep on flashing back, thinking how everybody in my squad was killed except DJ Washington. I'm here today while they strip me of all of my clothes and the only thing that I had on was a sock and my dog tags but while I was there hey I kept singing in my mind all day all night the angels keep a watch over me isn't that good news hey I'm still here in spite of it all. Is there anybody here know that even though you've been through the valley of the shadow of death, you can wave your hand and say, thank you, God. You bless me to see another day. Here we are today. I'm looking at Brother Udell. God brought him out of the hospital. Didn't know what it was. Had a breathing problem. But God brought him back. God will do it every time there. Come on, y'all. Oh, God wants a yes. There might be somebody here today. Haven't given your life to Christ. Yes to. Yes to his will. cares of life when you down just know he's moaning me come what may what may and my answer is come on whoever you are So yes Yes to Yes to his will Oh Where you know Yes no Come 
with me. If you're here, come on. Come with me. And my answer is yes. baptism restoration come come with me and my answer is still yes come on one more time oh yes oh yes Let the church say amen again. Amen. For God is true. His word has power to change lives. And proof of that is right here. Let's have our praise report. Thank you. To God be the glory. To Bishop Washington, ministers, deacons, and members. We have Quentin, who's here for special prayer. Chaplain Robert LaSure, who's joining on his Christian experience, and Sister Julie Brown, who is joining on her Christian experience. All right, everybody say amen. amen. Would you please come up, stand up, stand up right here. Amen. On behalf of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Bishop Washington, our pastor, and the entire Mount Hermon Church family is with the great joy of Jesus Christ that I extend to you, my brother, the right hand of welcome. To you, my sister, the right hand of welcome. And to you, my brother, I know the power of prayer changes things. And, and right now, we're going to have a minister come and pray for you. So if you don't mind, please stand right here before the altar. Turn around. Face the pulpit, please. and heavenly high father we thank you God. we thank you father for today father as lord it shows that you are still working god that you are still moving within the hearts and lives of everyday people father um, as you have called us lord to go out into the deep father and to cast down our nets father 
You have called us to forsake any everything and anything in order to follow you, Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the souls that come up this morning, Lord, for those who are on their Christian experience and prayer, Father. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Father, for God. You did not have to do it, but, Father, you did. So, Father, we praise you, Lord, and we thank you, God, and we ask that you would keep those who came up here today, Father. Lord, for Father, it says that you who does a good work, that he who does a good work with us will be faithful to complete it into the day of Jesus Christ. So, Father, I ask that you would keep them, Father. I ask, Father, that you would protect them, Lord, and that we as a church would come around them and encourage them, that we would be the church that you have called us to be, Father, that we would love on them, Lord, that we would pray for them, Father, that when there is a need, God, that we would be there for them, Lord, that, Father, when they are hurting and that when they are sick, Lord, that when they are mourning, God, that we would mourn with them, God. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would continue to move within the life of our church, Lord. Continue to raise up a generation. Continue to raise up people who are fervently following you, Lord. For, Father, you have called us, Lord, Lord, to forsake everything in order, God, to follow you. So, Lord, we ask this, God, and Lord, also I pray for those, Lord, who did not come up this morning. Maybe for some, Lord, who you have been tugging upon their hearts, Lord, and that they have been wanting to give their lives over to you, Father, but they have not yet to do so. God, I pray that you would continue to convict. I pray, Father, that you would draw them, Lord, until they answer your call, God. For, Father, when you choose, Lord, Father, I know, Father, that that you can awaken souls. I know, Father, that you are a God who moves and you work in mysterious ways, God. So whatever circumstance that some people may be coming in here with, Lord, I ask, God, that you would continue to work within their lives. And, Lord, also we pray for those who are sick, Lord, within here, God, that you would show yourself as a healer. Show yourself, Lord, as a good father, Lord, who answers the prayers and the cries of their people, Father. And that even if healing does not come in this life, Lord, let us remember that there is healing in the next. For, Father, you promise that there will be a day when you will return. That there will be a day, Lord, in which you will execute justice and that you would ransom your people, Father. And that you would bring in people, Lord, where there will be healing, Lord. No more tears, no more pain, no more sickness, God. No more distress. So, Father, we ask that you would do such a thing, Lord. Please do that on today, Lord. And lastly, Lord, we want to pray, Father, that we would that we would be uh, not only a growing people, but a going people, Lord. For, Father, that we would do as you have commanded us to, Lord, as you have called us to make disciples, Lord. Father, let us be that church, Lord. Let us testify of the goodness of what you have done for us, Lord, through your Son, that we have peace with God, that we have forgiveness of sins, Lord. And also, Father, that we would be a church, Lord, that it, that invites others, Lord, to come and experience the same. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, let the church say, Church say amen. Shall we all stay? Oh, let the church, let the church say amen. Let the church say God has spoken at the church. the Holy Spirit. Rest, root, and abide with us, henceforth, now, and forevermore. And we all said amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. Church say, everybody, amen. God. Please follow the directions of our ushers. They will let you out safely.